Capricorn. Welcome to your January 2018 love reading. It's Raina here. I wanted to say 2017 so badly because uh, I'm still in that mode, especially since it's 2017 when I'm recording this in December. I've already made the mistake three times of <laughs> uh, writing that when I've uh, labeled the video. So hopefully I'll get it straight this time when I when I upload this. Speaking of uploading videos, I also am going to be having a uh, 2018 general tarot uh, forecast for your sign. And uh, when that is uploaded, you will be able to see it on my channel. I've only done about half of them so far. Also, I have in the hopper, or in the works, a 2018 love reading for singles called New Year New Love. I've only done half of those. That's available on Vimeo. And uh, so check the link when if, if it's below this video in the show, show more section, um, the link for uh, Vimeo, then you'll know what's up. Until then, that means it hasn't come up. I've had some tech issues uploading uh, Vimeos. So um, I'm just um, going to be doing those in the near future. So I want to let you know about that. And also, in January for you, you have Saturn in your own sign. So that should be interesting for Capricorn individuals. I wonder how that will play out in terms of your love life. Sorry I'm doing that, but um, just trying to just trying to focus here. And what else? Um, so what do you have in your fifth house? You have Taurus. Well, that will be more active in the spring in the northern hemisphere, of course. Autumn in the southern hemisphere when we have planets in Taurus. Okay, let us begin. Woo, that's quite a how do you do? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny with the, the tower card because um, you have that, that kind of uh, stuff happening in general because you are a sign that um, currently is hosting Pluto and uh, or you're in uh, Pluto is in Capricorn so you're experiencing a transit until 2023 and the, the tower card you know works out perfectly although I would say Uranus too and Uranus is in Aries and that's forming a square to uh, Capricorn so there's a lot of fireworks let's put it that way cardinal energy too which is very much about things happening. Okay, I'm going to pick a, an additional clarification card here because um, Seven of Swords isn't necessarily a card of finality to me. Okay, so this um, heart of the matter connected to the tower a lot of people, I read a lot of comments when a reader gets the tower and they're like, oh no, not the, not the tower. But you know, the tower can be a state of being where you're in a pressure cooker situation and all of a sudden all hell breaks loose and everything just comes out. Now that's not necessarily the best way to go about life, to just kind of keep everything inside and then to explode. But... In some cases, it can be a liberating experience. So an example is you're in a relationship with somebody and they are just like um, very demeaning to you and you take it and you take it and you take it and then finally you tell them to, you know, go straight to hell, do not pass go, collect $200 and, you know, you, you say every thing that you've been keeping against them, you know, since the, the first time they uh, dissed you, and then it's like the relationship just abruptly ends, or something like that. Now, on one, you know, on one hand, you could say that's a very negative experience, but it allows you to move on. It allow, it's a cathartic 
situation, in other words. So it can be very cleansing. It's not the ideal, though, because the ideal is to express yourself at the beginning. Other, you know, in this type of scenario, you may have held on to grievances for years until you could take it no more. And sometimes it could even be some kind of a health crisis or uh, another thing where things are being shoved under the rug and then some event outside of you, which is really not outside of you, but I mean seemingly outside of you, comes in to rid you of that situation. But it can be a little bit trickier in that case because you don't have control over it. If you tell somebody, you know what, I don't, I'm not going to take this kind of treatment, you're in the driver's seat. If you're waiting around for um, something to happen, something to change, the other person to change, and they never do, and then it turns out that somebody comes to you and tells you that they've been seeing this person for 10 years, um, that can be very devastating. And it can lead to the same end result, but it's not the, the way that you would have liked to have uh, had uh, the ending take place. Now, on the first day of the year, we do, we do have a um, we do have a full moon in Cancer. Cancer is the opposite sign of Capricorn. So what this means is that it is highlighting your seventh house of marriage or other committed partnership. And full moons can bring secrets coming out in the open. So you could see the beginning of the year just with something um, kind of coming out and it can feel very shocking um, I, I don't think it has to be though I mean I've certainly had readings that I watched on YouTube and and you know th th these are general readings but even if it was a specific situation it doesn't mean it has to be traumatic it just could be that there is this thing in your face that you can't ignore anymore and um, it but it's a catalyst it's a catalyst for your best life, okay? Um, and whenever you f uh, frame things in that way, and you think that everything is working, that the universe is conspiring on your behalf, it really makes things a lot more palatable. In the past position, we have uh, the Ten of Cups. This is a card of marriage. We can talk about the happiness and um, uh, that this represents. And so with that tower card, it's almost like this rude awakening of like this fairy tale that somehow has gone south. Again, this is for those who are, you know, who resonate with it. It may not be everybody, you know, who has gotten married. If your relationship really is good, then chances are it's going to continue to be good. And hopefully you're not watching uh, a love uh, reading if your relationship is going well. I, I get, once in a while I get somebody and they'll say, this has nothing to do with me. I'm in a great relationship. And I'm thinking, well, why are they watching a love reading? Because there's nothing to see here. If, if everything's great, it's almost like they're not quite sure about that. So, um, but the thing is that I'm of the belief that when there are these quote-unquote shocking events, it's usually because the person who is the quote-unquote victim was probably not tuned into the other person as much as they think they were. Either they were working a lot, um, maybe they ignored some red flags, and so I would say it's very rare that a situation that comes across as shocking really, if you look at the relationship itself, it, it could be in retrospect that you see that you ignored certain warning signs, either because you were in denial or because you were just um, so preoccupied with other things. And that's actually, I'm saying this as a good thing. I'm saying that if you really are plugged into your relationship, then there are no, there aren't going to be any nasty surprises. Um, and then we have here the Eight of 
Pentacles, which is a card of perfecting one's craft. Now, again, this could be someone, you are connected to pentacles being of the earth element, and this could be like your typical modus operandi, which is being very diligent professionally and carrying on, maybe losing yourself in your work if you feel this sense of like, you know, chaos in, in another area. Or it could be that you are trying to make the relationship work even after a rather surprising uh, situation developing, that you still want to make it work. And whether or not that's a good idea, who knows? It's something that um, you may just feel called to do. In the higher perspective, the spiritual perspective of the situation, karma. The judgment card is connected to karma. So karma means action. And a lot of people think karma means punishment. And this is unfortunate because people don't see what uh, the whole idea of karma means, which is that um, there's cause and effect. That's all it means. And so uh, what's beautiful, I think, about the idea of cause and effect is that you can also, if you're somebody who, let's say, your partner cheated, um, you can look at yourself and not have to feel like a victim. So, for instance, uh, if you have a very demanding career and you were not, you were not somebody who always um, was home when your partner was home, and that person strayed from, you know, the marriage, you can say, you can look at yourself and say, you know what, I take a little bit of responsibility in this because I know that I wasn't really there for that person. That doesn't give them the right to be deceptive and to go outside the marriage, but I can see how they may have felt neglected. Now, these kinds of things, some people will react in anger at me saying that because they think that it's kind of excusing bad behavior. No, it's not. Um, but remember that when you get married or, you know, the equivalent of that type of relationship, that is a commitment. And the commitment isn't just to tie the knot or to move in or whatever, but it's also to invest your life with that other person. And if you are so involved in your career, for instance, then you can't expect that everything is going to be um, okay within that relationship unless that person is also very uh, involved in their <laughs> in their career and you both are just very, very, um, you know, absorbed in your careers. And so it works out on that end. But if one person is more into their career, obviously that could affect, it, there could be an imbalance somehow. The other thing about the judgment card is that you never have to feel like you have to even the score. You can always say that, um, you know, people who do things that are negative, they have to answer for those things. And you don't have to worry about it, um, think that you got the short end of the stick. You can just go on with your life and feel that you did the best that you could. Maybe there's some things you would do differently. And just move on and not feel that sense of um, victimization. Now, again, um, in that, in that uh, with this card, if you are in a situation where there was something that you found out that was rather surprising about a partner you may decide that you you want to go to mar marital counseling or something like that. So the Eight of Pentacles can be about trying to work on the relationship even. What crosses you is represented by the Seven of Wands. If this other person is somebody who is verbally abusive, I, you know, to say nothing, we don't even have to talk about physical abuse, but on the verbal level, and you always feel like you're on the defensive, then you have to realize that you may be in a toxic relationship, that 
the game is to keep you on your toes, to keep you uh, defending yourself, and you're in that constant state where you're not able to just relax and feel accepted by that person. And that's how they have power over you. And if that's the case, and you're working on yourself, hopefully that the, the counselor will point out to you that this is what is going on, the dynamic, and you will decide to leave that relationship because it's, it's um, toxic when the other person is trying to make it out like you're, no, you're not good enough. And that does happen. Sometimes you may even be dealing with a narcissistic personality where they um, use those kinds of ways of uh, keeping you on your toes, so to speak, to keep you like um, in a constant state of um, feeling inferior. And um, that's their control, uh, control that they are used to get you to be in a weakened state and it can be kind of like subtle in the sense that you may just be naturally one of these people that always has felt if you if you've always had insecurities then that can just simply be what you assume about yourself and that's something you have to work on within yourself the, the relationship can just be showing you how you have a tendency to attract people who tell you that you're not good enough. The advice of what's coming in is represented by the full card. So you may decide in January that you're going to embark on a new adventure in life. Saturn is in your sign. You may want to kind of um, do different things. And maybe you feel this sense that your relationship is creating instability in your life, you know, emotionally, that really kind of affects other areas. And so what I like about this card so much is that it really talks about an adventure. But it's not one where the person is at a luxury hotel and they're um, just being very uh, indulgent. It's somebody who's who's trying to find themselves. And it's all about the journey, not the destination. And so they have a very uh they have very little baggage with them. They're just trying to um follow a new course of action. That's what the zero point is. You're just reinventing yourself maybe or something along those lines. And then the outcome is a seven of swords. This is another card of like um, going in alone in this particular context and enjoying that independence. For some people, it may be after many years of being in a relationship and identifying with another person. Actually, to tell you the truth, the card I picked as a clarification is three of wands, and this is another card of... Um, expanding your horizons and uh, you know the looking at things from a more you know rather than that tunnel vision and think seeing things from a very um, just like the the landscape in front of you and that sense of possibility which is so intoxicating you know when you feel like you've been let out of that prison so this could be like jailbreak in a sense even if you did not initiate it. So that's really cool. I really like that for you, Capricorn. I hope you enjoy this. And if you'd like a private reading, you can click on the link below. My website is rainamoonastrology.com. Take care. Bye.